Welcome to Dano on Fire. Today we're checking out Via Torino. I hope I got it right. Okay, it's a brand new restaurant that has been in the market for quite some time. Uh, but things are a bit slow these days in terms of them pushing their name out, which makes it easy for us. It has been so booked for private events. We thought we'll just bring you the news and tell that they are up and going for some great Italian food. With me, I have someone who is making amazing headlines. I think I'm a big fan of his political journey, his... Uh, his hunger towards uh, representing this country in the right way. A young leader who is making big waves. I'm happy to have Shana Kian. Yeah. Vanakkam. 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 Thank you for being here. Absolutely a pleasure to have you. Uh, this show is supposed to be fun. This show is also a show that feeds you. <laughs> so, which is great. Yeah. We're shooting this on a day that is raining, so you can understand. It's yeah. one of those days to eat and talk. Yeah. But it's also a painful day today. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he had a parliament sitting the whole day. Yeah, you were at Parliament today? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we had Parliament this morning. Yeah. And also he had uh, petrol crisis issues that he had to solve, lots of things happening. Thank you for being on the show. Let's first speak about you. I really yeah. want to get to know you and introduce you to the people who may not know you. So, you're a Member of Parliament, you're one of the youngest who is seated there. How do you like the experience dealing with all the older <coughs> gents and a few females? <laughs> uh, well, uh, in fact, I'm the youngest uh, member of parliament representing the opposition, not the parliament. I'm the youngest member of parliament in the opposition. In the opposition, oh. and I represent the Tamil National Alliance, and I got elected to parliament from Batiklo. Uh, well, unfortunately, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that there should be people from every age group in parliament. Uh, there, is, there shouldn't be an age limit to. The, I know some people say that people, politicians should retire at 65. But I do think that the experience matters also. They should be play an advisory role and give their share their experience with the younger parliamentarians. But unfortunately, the ratio is so wrong that it's the opposite. So yeah. where we have we have five MPs who are under thirty, and I think we had large number of MPs above seventy. So if the ratio can change, so let's say if we have five percent of the MPs above a certain age yeah. group, they can play an advisory role in Correct. you know, getting the parliamentary practices and the traditions and all that uh, here. But uh, actually, this ninth parliament uh, has been a strange parliament, a parliament where you know, government has two-thirds majority and has crashed within a uh, year and a half yes. and it's in just shambles right now. Yeah. And uh, you know, just a man who wasn't even elected uh, to parliament is all of a sudden the prime minister <laughs> after a year and a half. So, um, I think uh, in the history of Sri Lanka, uh, the parliament that I first got elected to uh, will, be, will, be, will, be, will be written in, in the history books. books. Yeah. Uh, it's the first time I think um, uh, the Prime Minister was re... he retook his position, uh, that is uh, Prime Minister Rani Vikramasinghe, in 11 months of entering par in parliament again in the new government, which is quite interesting, if I could put it that way. But um, you're, you are a Trinitian, yes, so right. how did this mix happen? So you represent one area, but you studied in Trinity. So, uh, tell me about your life. <laughs> so uh, when, I, when I was born in 1990, and uh, a few weeks before I was born, uh, my parents up until that point lived in Batiklo, uh, in Kalawanchikuri, that's, that's where I live now, I built a house there again. Um, and uh, with the, in the 90s, there was severe unrest uh, in the country with the uh, Indian army on one side, the Sri Lankan army on the other side, and there were many militant groups other than the LTT as well at the time. And uh, I think there was a lot of violence that was happening, so my parents had to flee Batiklo. Even Tamil people had to flee Batiklo uh, because at the, at the hands of violence. So, uh, and then they came to Colombo, and I was born in Colombo in Valdavata. And then, oh, uh, true Tamil boy. True Everyone boy. is well about the. I'm a Vella boy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then, uh, my father is a doctor by profession, is a medical doctor. So he chose to move to the estates uh, in Norelia to work as a doctor because he could speak uh, the language mm. and he could it'll be uh, easier, easier for him and for us also as a you know it's the same culture kind of thing. And then later on, uh, I have an older sister, and when she had to start school. Uh, then they bought a house in Kandy and then uh, we moved to Kandy and then that's how I ended up at uh, Trinity, Trinity College in Kandy, yeah. So it has been a bit of a roller coaster ride. Uh, you I, know, I don't think it was for me because I don't remember yeah, much true. of it. But you know, the, the whole point of that people don't think about is the fact that how Tamils had to leave 
even though it was a fight for the Tamils, it was quite an interesting journey. I fall into the category that actually ran with the flow. So we have similar stories. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, it's a it's a very uh, it's a very slippery uh, slippery road to discuss about how uh, Tamil people get you know uh, displaced and you know have to move aside. So I don't think that will be that uh, this best, show will not that be this enough. show will be not yeah. be enough. I want you to eat though. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I. I also want to let you know there's so many things happening outside today. Like I think when we step out, there might not be a country. Just keep you informed. This could be one of those Hollywood films when you step out, like the world has changed. Um, wanted to ask you, as a politician or member of parliament, are you happy with your choice and your decisions? As a person, are you happy that you made this move without living a comfortable life, stress-free, with air, hopefully? <laughs> Well, the hair I don't think would have uh, would have been there regardless <laughs> because I think it's a genetic thing. My right, grandfather okay. was bald, my father's bald, my uncles are bald, and I'm bald. And I actually started balding quite young at 21 because um, I knew I was going to lose hair. So during my teens, late teens, I had all sorts of hairdos and colors right. and all that. So I think that uh, that I contributed it, yeah. that contributed <laughs> for it to go faster. But oh, yeah. you know, if it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But interesting thing that you say because um, just after high school, I did my O levels in up until my O levels I was in Trinity College, and then I chose to migrate to uh, Australia, and uh, I, I studied I, I studied there for three years, and then you know Australia was offering permanent residency and citizenship for people who do skilled migration mm. who could do skilled migration. So I was an accountant by profession. So I chose to. Uh, apply for it and I did get approval so I have as a permanent resident of Australia so I did actually choose to come back to Sri Lanka and to leave uh, you know the comfortable life because I worked it out my current uh, hourly wage is one dollar per hour mm. uh, paid by people say parliamentarians make so much my hourly salary is one dollar per hour and when I was 16 I used to make around 18 dollars per <laughs> hour so I think uh, that was an unskilled job yeah. But uh, and then I worked as an auditor by uh, auditor for a ch private practice. So yes, I did. I'm I'm happy about the choice that I've made. I I'm still happy that I've come back because at least I feel that uh, you know at least people are listening. Today is the 18th of May as we do this recording, and I think we've made a lot of progress in the last year and a half as a, as a country. Mm. I know we have crashed economically, we have crashed politically, but as a country, as, as Sri people. Lankans, as people, we have evolved in the last year and a half. So much to so so much so that uh, you know today, there was there were people at golf face remembering people who died in Mulivaikal towards the last stages of the war. I mean, that's a huge step. That you know true. that golf face strip was only known to have uh, army parading up and down on Independence Day and War Victory Day. Mm. And these were these were not people who were politically motivated. They did have they didn't have any political affiliation. They are just individuals. And you see. Two or three years ago, people were talking about Vanda Kottu, Vanda Peti, and yeah. how you know these Muslim tradesmen were hiding yeah. things in women's underwear. To and people believed it so yeah. fast. And now I think they are more. They have, they have they have started asking why. Correct, and they've started asking why, and they've act, started acting upon it. You yeah. know, you know, for an instance, in Nigambo, when uh, the, on the 9th of May, when the prime minister unleashed his goons on innocent protesters at Golface Green. And then it happened. It became a riot where people were all fighting against uh, each other. In Nigambo, there was a specific incident on a video that went viral. This guy just drives up and says, "Anna gahano, Muslimon gahano, piranna thambi gahano." And then people are like, "Where? Tell us where." Mm. Like, "Okay, let's go. Let's go check. Don't spread false uh, rumors." So, true. I mean, we have evolved in a year uh, to a point where you know it's. I mean, that's great. So, and I feel that I have, I have. That is what I. That is what I envisage for Sri Lanka. That's what I wanted to see in Sri Lanka. That's what I hope to see. And uh, I've spoken that out. I've said this is what needs to be done. I've kept saying that, you know, even when the Muslim Janasa, when the Muslims burial issue was there, a lot of people were saying, why are you talking on behalf of the Muslims? You don't, it doesn't even concern you. So I said, look, just because it doesn't affect me, doesn't I shouldn't be that. quiet when it's affecting somebody else. Just like how when Sinhala people are getting attacked now by Gota, we stood up for it. We said, no, we condone this violence. So, I'm happy that uh, I made this choice because uh, I feel that uh, you know I'm able to communicate to and you have a voice to represent the people and I'm able to communicate to them I don't know why I, I don't understand how uh, because I was really happy actually I was really happy that my speech was uh, put up on golf is green yeah and I don't think any other parliamentarian 
got the got the privilege to be uh, with the people know, no to have their speeches yes. and uh, also with the people for them to make you a part of it um, let's get into a break when we do come back I'm going to speak more because he's a member of parliament and we have a lot of things that's happening in the parliament that affects people who are out of the parliament so we need to ask him and he's one of those people who is super transparent I might get this show closed up but it's okay let's go for it. we'll see you after the break show in conversation with this uh, amazing man a smile would have been nice thank you <laughs> all right so let's speak about politics now we are in a <coughs> sticky uncomfortable painful time and uh, tell us the true picture now we had the prime minister giving a statement saying okay realistically we are terrible it's going to take three months three months of agony and then we are going to somehow rise above it and he said he's here to serve us and to get us out of this. Do you believe this could happen? Well, uh, this doesn't look like a sticky time. I mean, this doesn't really reflect the country. No, no, no. Uh, you know true. something he actually told me? Our people, I said, this is the format of the show. They will understand that this is the format. And uh, anyway, you have always yeah. been with the people, so. No, because, uh, well, in fact, uh, even after you told me how the program's going to be, the reason why I agreed to come on the show and agreed to be in a setting like this yes. whilst there's a crisis is because I, I've noticed that your audience uh, is quite different to the they're audience. Sensible. They're the audience that normally don't really uh, maybe in my in, from what I've seen probably don't follow parliament every day maybe yeah. is that is that correct? No, no, is no. that a correct assumption? No. We don't watch those videos that unless there's some electrocuting excitement like taking a chair and hammering people. And right. So like. but so but see there is a there, this message needs to get sent to every every type of uh, audience. See, Honorable Ranil Vikramasinghe, when he got elected as uh, Prime Minister, you know, if anybody thinks that he's able to bring Sri Lanka out of this crisis, they're being fooled. He, in fact, in his speech, he said that the country is going to face the worst crisis that we've seen in the next two months. I mean, it's already bad. How bad can it be? But we knew it's going to get bad. But is it going to get worse than this? It, yes. it is, it is, for sure. We only have one million dollars uh, of uh, foreign mm -hmm. currency. So, now if you think of an example that I could give, Ranil Vikram Singh on his... Uh, uh, when he uh, got appointed, he went to the Waluka Rama temple to, you know, get blessed by the clergy. And on his right-hand side or the left-hand side, one of his closest associates, uh, I think, uh, Mr. Dayagamage, former MP minister, was there. And recently at uh, the COPE committee, that's the committee on public enterprise in parliament, we had summoned the People's Bank of Sri Lanka to do their audit. And on that, there is bad debt of almost four billion that has been borrowed by this particular individual's company, Daya group of companies. So if he is the one who's standing next to Honorable Ranil Vikram Singh, huh, do you think he could be able to bring this guy to books? I mean, that guy hasn't paid a cent in the last three to four years. That's what the COPE con committee report says. Do you think when he was in the opposition, he couldn't do it? Now his beloved friend is the leader of the country as prime minister. Do you think he was going to pay? Now that is, that is one, one narrative. If you look at it even into the crisis, the actual crisis, see, it's not just an economic crisis anymore. It's a political crisis. People want Gotabe Rajapaksha to resign only because he has himself admitted that he's the reason for this crisis. He has said that he took a wrong decision with uh, the oh. fertilizer, fertilizer uh, ban. And he also has said that he should have gone to the IMF a lot earlier. I mean, this is not like a grade 5 student coming to the teacher and saying, look, you know, ma'am, I've uh, messed up on my uh, homework, let me resubmit it. Not, it's, not, it's 22 million people's lives. If he's done something wrong, the rightful thing for him to do is resign and go home. And if he doesn't want to resign, it's fair, only fair that people ask him to go home. So, 
I mean, there are so many things. The COVID was mismanagement. I can just give you like 10 reasons why he should go home. So IMF now, this IMF story has been around for the past two, two and a half months in the public. Uh, and there was a story if there is political unrest or even public unrest, IMF will hold back. So is it the reason why the president is not leaving? Well, president is the reason for the political instability. If the president leaves, uh, that means that there is political stability. I mean, it's. I mean, this show is probably not the best show to you know get into details on how constitution works and how the IMF works. But just to say it in a nutshell, IMF want to see political stability. Political stability does not mean 113 MPs in Parliament or 120 MPs in support of the President in Parliament. Political stability does not mean that the Prime Minister and President have a good relationship together. Political stability means that the people of this country accept the country's leaders. Hmm. So, Gota Go Home is still there. Now, there's a Ranil Go Home, No Deal Gama, you know, and Gota Go Gama is all over the country. You know, so, if the public are not happy with the political leadership, then there is no political stability. The leaders could say, I mean, they, I, I heard that there were people being uh, bought over to, you know, form an all-party government from the opposition. Does that mean we are still printing money? Well, Ranil Vikramasinghe so uh, himself, himself said, said that, that uh, we are printing salaries, money. For salaries, yes. So if think. that was his plan, we didn't need him to come into, I mean, what has he addressed? What has he addressed? The only thing he has addressed is that he has enabled Honorable Mahindra Rajapaksha to leave his camp in the Navy camp in Trincomalee and come to Parliament. He has enabled Namal Rajapaksha to leave the camp and come to Colombo. He has enabled President Gotabe Rajapaksha to have a breather. He has enabled the SLPP MPs to probably cover up their tracks in case, you know, the government changes and there are investigations. We'll continue on this conversation when we do come back. Um, sorry if you can't exactly pick up the audio when I spoke about that. Uh, but in terms of food, we're going to dig into it right now. We'll see right after. Welcome back to the show. We are checking out Via Torino. I really hope I'm getting the name right. If you're planning on scolding me in the comments section, go ahead. I'm sorry, but that's Just all I can next do. next to Shirohana. <laughs> <laughs> that's easier. <laughs> I'm trying to mention the name of the place. You know, I always get scolded yeah. for pronunciation and all. I'm not perfect with my language, yeah. Jasmine. Unlike you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so uh, politically, you are making big waves. Uh, are you happy about it? Are you proud of this <laughs> moment? Uh, well, I don't think I've achieved anything yet to be to say that I'm very proud of myself. But uh, I feel that I've uh, I, I feel that I've done justice to the people who voted for me because during my election campaign, I never promised anyone to build their roads or to build their houses to and for them to have to give up their political rights to achieve that. So basically, I never you know sold my people or the votes that I got for my personal benefit like it's happening right now with some MP so I would say uh, I am quite happy with uh, what I've uh, done in the last few months mm. but in terms of where Sri Lanka is planning to progress for the person who is young who is contributing so much to this country if he or she is watching would you ask them to stay well, uh, that's a very tough uh, question. Uh, I'm not going to give you a yes or no answer. It all depends on uh, how you look at, uh, how you perceive, uh, I mean, how, you're, how you feel yourself about how the country should be. So in my opinion, you know, somebody who wants to see a united Sri Lanka, somebody who wants to see an inclusive Sri Lanka, somebody who wants to see all ethnic communities represented, you know, or feel comfortable, See, just because you say, we, let's be all Sri Lankan, you know, we all Sri Lankan, woohoo, all that. You know, if, if some one person has to compromise on their religious identity or their ethnic identity, I don't think that's, that's a healthy way of going forward. See, people say, oh, you know, in India, they sing the national anthem only in one language. Yeah. They sing in, uh, like, Bengali. Yeah. That's only 10% or 15% of the Indians speak uh, yeah. that language, not Hindi. Yeah. Right? Do you think uh, Sri Lanka would have a national anthem in Tamil? where, you know, the rest of them will... So, see, I'm not trying to stir things up, but I'm just saying that these are unresolved issues. Like, mm. look at my political party. Like I told you, we've never said that we are going to, you know, build you houses, bridges or roads. But our party has been consistently getting elected to parliament since 1950s, in early 1950s. So, 
what message does that tell you? Is that, that, that that's what the people want? So for somebody who feel that they can be, who can contribute to this, who feel that, you know, that they want to contribute to this, who feel that they could work towards this, uh, would definitely see a future in Sri Lanka. But if people are opposed to the idea of a coexistence, harmony and all that, and, uh, you know, they want to, you know, um, you know, just say, okay, this is a Sinhala Buddhist country. If you want, you stay. Otherwise, you just, you know. But uh, there's been a huge brain drain in the last few months. Correct. Just like it has been for the past 10 odd years. Yeah. Because although people say, I always say this, just because the war is over, it doesn't mean there's actually peace. Uh, that's a huge process in life. And I think we have not even touched the tip of it still. It's like a long way to go. Um, because the reason why I asked you was, even today, there are people applying their visa as much as there's a queue for fuel, there's also a queue for visas now, which is a bit of a sad crisis to see. Mm. Tell me, the current, there's a, uh, there's a joint coalition that has been created to lead this progress of member of five people. There's a parliament that's backing a prime minister who has one single seat. All of these new chapters that we're opening up, would it all end at a place where we Sri Lankans, citizens who have voted and brought these people into power, can enjoy a life that is relaxing? Well, Dano, to be very honest, I don't think right now is the best time to uh, answer that question with a positive response, you know? Things are not looking too great. Things are looking very bleak. But we can be hopeful. We have to be hopeful. There is no other way. And uh, you mentioned about brain drain. Yes, that's happening at a huge rate. People are getting headhunted from Sri Lanka because they only because they will get paid in dollars. And I, in fact, I've been told, I don't know, this is not unconfirmed, this is not verified news, but from a very confidential source, that's a very legit source, that around 20 MPs who got attacked on the 9th of May where their houses were attacked are trying to secure political asylum for their families. So they wanted to leave as well. So, but uh, were these attacks, because nobody was in any of these houses. Well, uh, well, it's a, it's a huge mystery. I mean, for it to be so well coordinated, for them to have fuel to burn them down. That is true. And then if they were amateurs at burning houses, there'll be some houses that'll be partially burned. These houses were well, properly, burned, yeah. properly burned. And how do you find their houses? Man, it's so hard. Google map, I get lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, you know, there's also a bit of political rivalry in the local politics. So, you know, the opposition MP. I mean, let's not go there. Let's, I mean, that's happened. And they, I feel there's a bigger conspiracy than just, uh, there seems to be a coordinated effort. Before we wrap things up, because this show is actually about food, uh, a little bit. Do you cook? Uh, I can make paripu, I can make chicken, I can make a few things. Not, you not can survive? I can, I can do more than surviving. Ah, so, uh, are you a sweet person or a savoury person? I am quite sweet, but... Uh, <laughs> Cheesy to that. Uh, but I do like, I am more of a, a savoury person. Brilliant. Right. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being so insightful. Thank you for being somebody who uh, actually the youngsters can look up to. Yeah. I personally am a big fan of who you are uh, and who you are becoming. Um, anyway, he's an el eligible bachelor. If you want to send in your entries, it's good to take them. I never said uh, that I was an eligible bachelor. You're putting me in, uh, you're putting me in trouble. I have to just put that at the end. Uh, so, yeah. All yours. On that note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you for joining us on Down on Fire. We'll see you soon. Thank you for hosting at this beautiful place. If you love Italian food, it's a place to be because every single thing that you eat, at least for the next few months, is going to be super authentic because they have really struggled to bring the original flavors here to Sri Lanka. Thank you.